Y'all know what time it is. Black bandana. Two black MMA journalists. Yeah, it's time for Black Market Picks. I'm your host, the master of black Negro Jitsu, Lil Ross Stephan. Today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Divine Prodigy, and we'll be bringing you all the top picks and plays for UFC on ESPN2, Barboza vs. Gaethje. Uh, we got a great night of fights ahead. We're not going to do a full breakdown of the card. We used to get you out of here in under 10 minutes, but since um, we're not doing a full breakdown this week, we're just going to get you all the top picks and plays, probably under 20 minutes. So all the other podcasts take two hours and stuff like that. The advantage of black market picks is we get you in and out of here quick. Javaz Clark, how do you feel about this card? Hey man, I, I like this card, man. I feel like um, I feel like line of construction originally from what I'm doing right now isn't too confusing. I feel like you have to go with your your strong leans and your strong uh, your strong core and stick with it and just find the right amount of dogs in between these kind of pick 'em fights we have and just and just roll with it. But um, we'll we'll see how it goes, man. I'm feeling pretty confident though. All right, all right. Let's get right into it. What are our price ranges for today? We got 9.4 9. to 8.7 at the top tier. 8.6 to 7.8 is that mid tier. And 7.7 7 down is that garbage tier. Let me stop. <laughs> okay. Let's get right into it. My top overall play in the top tier is going to be Ray Borg versus Kenny Guy. I haven't done a whole lot of research on the Kenny Guy, but Ray Borg is an absolutely elite play who uses a lot of grappling and is very active within his fights. Um, He's the biggest favorite on the card. He's an elite talent. And um, you always feel like you could just plug him in, man. He's a hell of a fighter. So I love Ray Borg. I think he's I, – I have to do more research on Kenny to see exactly how much I love Ray Borg. But he's got monstrous upside here at uh, in, in, in this tournament. And I don't know if many people within this price range really do. My next uh, play in this price range is going to be one. Oh, man. How do I even say this name? His name is Nezechukwu. African. Kennedy and Zeku. In Zeku. In Zeku. Zeku. Kennedy and Zeku. Are you sure? I am sure. I just watched an interview on it. That's how he pronounced it. He didn't correct them. So, Kennedy and Zeku. Okay, Kennedy and Zeku. Kennedy and Zeku versus Paul Craig. Um, Craig fights are always juicy, juicy, juicy spots. I got to pick any. I always play both sides of Paul Craig fights because either he's going to, like, get a submission or he's going to get the shit kicked out of him. There's no two ways about it. So I love Kennedy and Zeku. Uh, just for being a Paul Craig opponent, those fights always crack off. And my number three overall play in his price range is going to be Alex Perez. Uh, I don't know if his opponent is necessarily incompetent, but he is very capable on the mat. And I have witnessed... Mr. De La Rosa be submitted by capable grapplers before. Um, so I got to like Alexander Perez. I just like the fact that he's kind of, you know, he's uh, he, he averages a, a healthy amount of DraftKings points, but he's, he's got that. He's got the big time finishing potential. I don't know if Kevin Holland, Sabrina Mazzo, Yusuf, I don't know. I don't like the, their spots. So I gotta like um, Alex Perez, and then uh, last but not least, oh yeah, there's Green. I'm gonna add, throw somebody else in. He's another guy with wrestling upside. I don't know how much wrestling upside he has here, but he could score a healthy amount of points. I wouldn't bank on it, bank on it, but he's definitely in play. Travis Clark, what's your top tier looking like? At number at number three, I'm gonna have to go um, Alex Perez. I know you touched on a little bit. Um, I like Mark De La Rosa as a fighter, but this is too big of a step up, I think. I know he's taking this fight on short notice. I believe in um, props to him for doing that. But Alex Perez, I think, he comes back with something to prove off of that Benavidez loss, in which he just looked just terrible. It was like a whole different fighter from the one that beat um, Jose Shorty Torres. So, so I'm sure for people who are 
maybe betting um, Alex Perez and wanting to put him in a DraftKings lineup. Like I said, I think he's a good play, but you have to wonder um, who does he, what version of Alex Perez shows up? Is it the Jose Shorty Torres version where he just destroyed him? Or is it the uh, Alex um, Joseph Benavidez version where he just kind of stood there and just did nothing and got the fight taken to him? So I don't know, but this should be a smash spot. I don't see where De La Rosa is better than Alex Perez. Um, of course, maybe the submissions could be a wash between the two. De La Rosa is pretty much known for his jiu-jitsu, but I don't think it even gets that, to that point. I think uh, Alex Perez should roll here. Um, number two, I'm going to go with um, Sadiq Youssef. I know this is one of those fights that uh, you look on Twitter, the MMA community, they're going back and forth between like Shaman Marais versus uh, Sadiq. I like Shaman Marais as a, as a fighter. Um, he, he, he's, he, he's good in my book. I know he's only lost to what? Zabit. And then um, he's lost to uh, Marlon Marais. So, I mean, when you, when you factor that in, I mean, you look at it, it's like it's kind of like he's only losing losing to elite fighters. So in this case, this is a litmus test in a sense for Sadiq Yusuf uh, to prove if he can be elite to, you know, get a guy like that out of here. But I think he can do it. I think this guy is on a terror. You know, I've been on this on. Uh, I've said that these these Nigerian fighters, they are on the rise. They are on the rise. Sadiq, um, Kennedy, all of them, uh, Mark D. Casey, uh, Usman, who just won the title. Um, you got uh, Israel Adesanya about to fight for a title. These guys are coming. They are not playing. Momentum is a big factor in in, in mixed martial arts, and I think he keeps it going. I know you you um you look around. Sadiq has that power. Um, we know that Shaman Marais is going to come forward, but I think that once he comes forward and he sees the speed and the power at which Sadiq hits, I think Shaman Marais will be on that back foot. And um, I also didn't like that. Um, I think he he's he's corrected it by then, but. When I look at that Matt Sales fight with Shaman Marais, I was on Shaman Marais on that fight, and he was looking good those first two rounds. But that third round, he lost, and it was because he faded. I don't, I, you know, I hate coming, uh, um, going with fighters that fade. But um, nonetheless, I think he corrected that in that Julio Arce fight. But we'll, we'll see. This will be a closely contested fight. But I think that Sadiq Youssef gets him out of here with a knockout, probably like second round. Um, and number one for me is going to be Kennedy and Zeku. I know we you just touched on it as well. Um, Paul Craig, they bring that guy in there to lose. That's that's his job. His job. No shit. Hello. Yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah, my fault. My fault. My fault. Um, yeah. Um, Paul Paul Craig's job is to come in and lose. Like they put him up against people like uh, Ankalaev or people like Jim Crute, people like Khalil Roundtree because they're testing out their prospects. And they usually want to give their prospects a gimme fight, and Paul Craig is the gimme fight. Now, of course, you could say, um, of course, you can say we're going. Uh, he, Paul Craig's going to go for the takedowns and try to submit him. We haven't seen Kennedy off his back, all that other stuff. But I mean, where he trains, where Kennedy trains for this MMA, I, you know, I think he'll have. Uh, I believe he'll have. Um, um, no, no, yeah, I'm sorry. He just trains at for, um, for this MMA. Which is a pretty good gym. They're they're definitely developing too. They're on the rise as well. And um, there's a lot of tape out on Paul Craig. If you if you watch tape, there's a lot of tape out on him. There's no secret of what he's gonna do. He's gonna come and try to take you down. He doesn't have any real real power on the feet. Um, they say Kennedy doesn't have any power on the feet either. But I looked at um I watched the interview with him um with James Lynch. Please go check that out if you haven't. And he 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 admittedly did not sh- um he admittedly did not showcase the best he had to offer in his last contender series fight. And promise that this time go around, he'll he'll show you what he's all about. He's gonna come out firing out the gate. Um, he's gonna show some power, and he he's gonna get Paul Craig out of there. And I I don't think Paul Craig, I don't think he likes being hit. Of course he ha- he has he has heart. He has heart. Can't take that away from him. He has heart. But at the end of the day, he, he this guy he he's a guy that the UFC feeds to people. He's a jobber, and I think he's going to do his job well on Saturday. And I think Kennedy gets him out of there. And I like Kennedy. For, for my number one play at 9,000. All right, all right. Um, right. Let's go on to our mid tier here. We've got, what, 8.6 to 7.7? 7.8. 7.8, actually. My number one overall play in this price range will be one Edson Barboza. He is, I don't see how he loses to Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje is too hittable, too brawlable. And Edson Barboza has never been the type of guy to get out brawled that I know of. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to think of when that's happened to him. I mean, Kevin Lee, 
I believe he took him down to the mat and wrestled him down. Nurmagomedov took him down to the mat and wrestled him down. It seems to me if you're not going to ground Edson Barbosa and pound him down, um, you're usually not going to win. I think uh, we might have a win from Michael Johnson here some ages ago on the feed. Tony, Tony Ferguson was trying to brawl with him, but he eventually took it to the ground. I just think Edson Barbosa is in a smash spot. Now, that being said, um, yeah, it's. It, I guess you got to play both sides of the fight, but Edson Barbosa feels like a lock to me. To me. Uh, my number two overall play in his price range is going to be Carolina Kovalkiewicz versus Watterson. I just don't see Kovalkiewicz losing this fight. She's got a healthy activity rate. She's active everywhere. And I don't know exactly about her upside, but man, in the decisions that she won before this, 101 points, 102 points versus Escobel, 101 points versus Herrick, um, she did lose to both uh, Gadelia and Andrade. But I don't think Michelle Watterson is any of those girls. Like, Kovalkiewicz should smash here and score a million points with her overall activity. Um, my number three overall play in this price range is going to be one. <clears throat> oh, man. Hold on. I'm going to go with a uh, Michael Johnson here. Uh, I It's Michael Johnson. And I just like this fight. I feel like it should be action-packed. I don't like Johnson to finish. I think he could, in fact, be finished, which is why playing the other side of it, or just let's say Johnson Emmett is my number three overall play. I like this fight. And I think either Johnson pieces up Emmett on the feet or Emmett, like, out grapples him. So we'll see. But, yeah, I like that fight. So that's my number three play. Play both sides of it. Javaz Clark, what's your top three looking like? In this <clears throat> Number three, I'm going to have to go um, Dave Branch. Now, this is one of those fights that if you follow the MMA Twitter, you see everybody and their mama betting on Jack Hermanson, and it could be some recency bias. You know, you got uh, Jack who's coming out here just taking guys down and grounding, pounding them out. But I think this is a situation where they, they really must have forgot who Dave Branch is. Dave Branch is no... He is no slouch. David Dave Branch is, is losing to people like Rockhold while um and beating people like Tiago Santos. Um, granted, we I think some of us actually called that that was gonna happen. It just seemed like a spot where Tiago Santos would lose. Whereas Jack Hermanson is struggling with struggling with people like Tyler Latis and and beating people like Gerald Mearshack. Like the level the level of competition here is is vast. The level of experience is probably even more vast. This, I agree. It's like I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how people. Is Hermanson? Is he? Is he? He's mostly dependent on the mat, right? I think Hermanson is mostly dependent on the mat, and um, that's not happening. Mat, actually, no. Actually, no. I think when I when Hermanson first like came into the UFC, they used to talk about him as a uh, a striker. I think he is now just like falling in love with this takedown, ground and pound stuff. He was never really like this before. And I don't know where it's coming from, but maybe if uh, I guess maybe he's going with that game plan of if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, I wouldn't. But I think when Manson came in originally, he wasn't really a wrestler. He was just a striker. But once he's got that first ground and pound uh, TKO, I think over Jack Marshman, it just took off. But like I said, Dave Branch, he is no slouch. He can strike if he wants to. And on the ground, I think it's Dave Branch's bread and butter. So I don't think Jack Hermanson can beat. Uh, Dave Branch anywhere unless Dave Branch is on a steady uh, a steep decline because of his age I don't see how Jack Hermanson gets it done Jack Hermanson should not be on Dave Branch's level so for 7900 I like that play and I think with MMA Twitter you know people who follow that who listen to the 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 expert MMA minds of the of the world um you know all these people betting on Jack Hermanson I like it keep on going because it will just lower the ownership on um, Dave Branch, and I'll take Dave Branch for 7,900 all day to, to win. I like it. Um, and then number one for me is going to have to I – mean, I mean, I'm sorry, number two is going to be Josh Emmett. Um, this is really kind of a fade on Michael Johnson. I think Michael Johnson, He, I don't think this weight class is right for him. Um, his last win at 145 was what? Uh, against Artem Lobov. We all knew it was going to be Artem Lobov. Artem Lobov 
isn't on the on the skill level of uh, Michael Johnson at all. But other than that, Lobov win. Uh, he might have. I think he might have lost to Feely, even though he won. Like you could arguably say he lost to Feely. He got uh, beat by Darren Elkins. Um, both of these guys, Darren Elkins and Andre Feely, are both what? Aren't they both that um alf- team alpha male? Which is going. Uh, which of course is probably rejoicing with that T.J. Dillashaw news, but both of these fighters have have both fought um, Michael Johnson and now get to get a third a, a third fight with Michael Johnson from Team Alpha Male. So you got Andre Feely, you can go to and, and see his tips on how to how to beat uh, Michael Johnson. You have Darren Elkins to get his tips, who actually did beat Michael Johnson, and um, Josh Emmett. I know he's coming off that he took a long layoff. That Ricardo Lamas KO was indeed. Uh, uh, frightening, but um, Josh Emmett, I think his, his hands, I think he still has power. I think his hands are still fast. He, he, I think he can definitely use his wrestling. I know Johnson has like some decent takedown defense, but I don't think this is the weight class for Johnson. And, and so far, he hasn't really looked good. Um, as as probably most of us originally thought he was going to look. So jo- Josh Emmett at seventy eight hundred, who for me he can he can he can he can strike and he can wrestle. Um, I think Josh Emmett is is, is looking good to me. Uh, for seven point eight k, I I like I like Josh Emmett. So he's number two for me. And then number one, if you if you follow my page or anything like that, you know who number one is going to be. Enrique Barzola. Um, I love this guy. Um, he checks all my boxes. He can he can strike or at least do enough striking to where he can uh close the distance for those takedowns. And he's relentless with those takedowns. He has the cardio to go. All three rounds, he's he will not stop. I like his low kick. I think that'll play a big factor in this fight. His calf kick against Kevin Aguilar. Um, I don't I don't buy the hype on Kevin Aguilar. I don't know why people are and all of MMA Twitter is on Kevin Aguilar. At least the ones that are the sharp minds in my mind. So I like that type of stuff too. But you got the the you got some some sharps as well on Barzola like myself. And I I love Barzola. I like what he does. I like the game he brings. Kevin Aguilar is overrated to me. Uh, he beat Rick Glenn. Rick Glenn is like old as hell in fight years. He's still, I think he's not even 30 yet, but he's old as hell in fight years. And uh, I mean, it was Rick Glenn. I mean, this is this is, this is is Enrique Barzola, who should be on like a seven or eight fight win streak had that um, Bosniak split decision um, gone Barzola's way. And I, I just like him. You know, he's DraftKings gold. I think he has some control issues on, on top once he brings you down, which is probably why he, you know, he gets about six takedowns uh, or more a fight, but it doesn't matter. I think when you're playing DraftKings, and this is one of those fights that's priced even, so I guess you would play even. But no, I, t- I take a stand on this. That burned me last week, you know, against the, the Hill Marcos fight, but you got to take stands sometimes. Uh, it limits the, the options you want to play and you get your core and your nucleus. But I think Barzola is handily going to take this fight by decision. And all the people who listen to to MMA Twitter and the bets on Aguilar and who's brought this bet down to a pick'em or or close to where Barzola was a an underdog could have been an underdog at one point, which I don't think will happen anymore. But uh, he he could have been. But I think that brings Barzola's ownership down too. And we know what Barzola can do when he gets in that octagon. He, the, Barzola's not going to roll over and die here. I don't think Kevin Aguilar. I think the hype is over overrated. And I think I'm I'm looking forward to Barzola putting him away. All right, all right. Let's uh, go on to our bottom tier, which is going to be 7.7 and below. Um, I think by default, the number one overall play in the bottom tier is going to be Justin Gaethje. Just for a fact that if he wins, he will be on a winning lineup, undoubtedly. I don't think he does, but if he does, he's going to be on a winning lineup. Um, so gotta love Justin Gaethje. I think he gets destroyed here, but it is what it is. I, I don't see his route to victory, uh, being as punchable as he is, um, and not using wrestling. He does have Division One wrestling background, but yeah, that's my number one overall play. Number two in his price range is going to be, I'm gonna go with Gerald Mearshart. Actually, I just don't think Kevin Holland is that good. And wherever Kevin Holland is really good at, which is on the mat, I think Mearshart is just as good. So, um, I really like Mearshart here because Holland is, I know he's been exciting to watch, but I have not been impressed with his performances. I was definitely not impressed by that performance against Tiago Santos. I mean, he was in the fight, 
uh, I guess on short notice, good for him. But that wasn't good. And then against uh, uh, John Phillips, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. John Phillips is kind of, uh, yeah, he's kind of raw. So I like Gerald Mearshart a lot. I'm going to have exposure to him. And I think he could really land an upset here. Number three overall in this price range, Shane Marais. I really like Shane Marais. I think he's a great fighter. He's very well-rounded. And I don't see why he can't beat uh, Super Sadiq Yusuf. It should be a great fight. I don't see why this isn't almost priced even. It should be a price even, play it even type of fight. It's not. I love the value on Shane Marais. Um, it's just the fact that I almost am almost sure this is like going to a decision or whatever. So I like the upside of Gaethje and Mearshart a little better. Travis Clark, what's your bottom tail looking like? Um, my bottom tail number three. Um, I'm gonna have to go Gerald Mearshart. I don't think he wins. I think Kevin Holland um beats him. However, Gerald Mearshart is a crafty guy. He's a crafty um veteran. He's been in this game. He knows. That I don't think there's anything that Kevin Holland can bring. That Mearshart hasn't hasn't seen. Um, with this fight, though, I think if in the if in the event that Mearshart was to win, I think it would be a case where Mearshart's getting his ass beat, but he's so crafty that maybe he he sneaks a punch in that might put Holland down, or maybe he takes the back or something like that. He might get a, a, a submission or something like that in. Um, you you really can never count Mearshart out. He's so damn tough and durable. Um, but he's been finished by submission a few times, so you have to wonder about that. I know Holland is decent on the ground as well. Um, but I just think it's one of those – I just think as a play, this is a play because this is a show that we got to give out plays now. Um, I just think as a play, it, it could, he, he could, he's one that could um, that could breeze by. I think if Mirita wins, it's going to be about 70-plus points or more. But I, I, just, th- I just think Mirshart can, can, can be crafty and, and sneak a little – a knockout or something like that, or a submission, and most most likely a submission. But I don't think he wins, like I said. But I have to give you a number three. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. Number two for me is going to be Casey Kenny. I know you said Ray Borg was your number one. Um, now Casey Kenny, uh, he's a double champion, a champ champ. Um, came out of LFA. He just won a fight on Friday, last Friday, and I think he's coming back now to one week later to do it all over again. So he should be on weight. Um. With this, um, I know Ray Borg has a lot for, going on his plate. You know, he has the uh, the child thing, plus you know other factors like the the the. the uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I lost my train of thought. But he has the child thing going on. Um, he has his layoff um, going on as well. I know Ray Borg's tried to get back in there multiple times and had to pull out. But um, I I, I just don't know. Casey Kenny, I was bo- I was very comfort comfortable, um, going for Ray Borg against Kyler Phillips. Kyler Phillips. It had had nothing for Ray Borg, but Casey Kenny, you know, the listen to the you listen to the way this man talks and the and the and the his the 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 confidence he exudes, which is is technically it's warranted. Uh, he has momentum on his side. He just fought. Um, he looks at this as this at this matchup as a great stylistic matchup for him. He he knows that Ray Borg um takes sometimes takes a grapple heavy approach. He feels he can he can be in that world with him. He also feels that his stand up is better and that um he he thinks he's going to put Ray Borg out in this first or second round. Now I know Ray Borg is top 5, so you know, you have to be something extraordinary to beat Ray Borg. But I don't know, man, you know that layoff combined with the fact that this guy has so much momentum, which I think is a big thing in mixed martial arts. Momentum can carry you a big way, you know. It, it seems like one of those fights that you think is so easy to call that when Casey Kenny beats him, you're like, what happened? And then for somebody, when you listen to somebody like me, and you just maybe put him in that one lineup just to see what happens, and he wins, it's like, hell yeah. So then, you know, the rest of your lineup can be as strong as you want it to be. But for me, I just feel like, you know, I feel like this is one of those moments where I know Ray Borg, if, should he win on Saturday, he comes out on that mic, he'll get that post-interview, and he'll say some something inspirational. I, I can see that happening because he has a lot going against him. But Casey Kenny, you know, I... I I just think I just think the momentum that he the wave that he's riding could very well propel him. I wouldn't bet it, of course, but like I'm saying, maybe one or two lineups on DK using Casey Kenny, who is the lowest fighter on the card, six eight hundred. So you know the rest of your lineup can be pretty solid. It's not too bad. And then number one, you know by default, like you said, we have to go Justin Gaethje. I think this fight is 
pretty much a must have on both sides. It, it is violence guaranteed. Um, you know that Edson Barboza struggles with pressure. I know um, Justin Gaethje will have Trevor Whitman in this corner. I don't know, you know, the, the one of the big questions going around, I don't know how people can really have too strong of a read on both sides with this fight. But one of the, the main things going around is will Gaethje use his wrestling? I know he put out a quote that said, you know, maybe I can, you know, I maybe I can. I don't know if I will, but that could be just, you know, some jibber jabber. However, you know, that's one path to victory. If he close, you know, Gaethje, he believes in his chin wholeheartedly. He takes about 10 strikes. He absorbs about 10 strikes per minute, which you never like as a fighter. But he does that to get on the inside. That's disgusting. You know, both, that's horrible. That is terrible. Y'all both, um, they both going to throw some leg kicks. I'm excited to see that match. But we know that if that Gaethje puts the pressure on, that's one thing that uh, Hooker was not going to do. Hooker is not a pressure fighter, but Gaethje definitely is. And if you can make, you know, Edson Barboza fight off that back foot or make him back up, you know, to the cage constantly, it limit it limits the kicking range and the kicking space that he has. So I mean, if if Gaethje decides to come out here and utilize some wrestling, which I hope that Trevor Whitman would say, hey man, you know, the smart path would be to do this. Then you know Gaethje can definitely win this if he turns up, if he wants to fire a fight with Edson Barboza. I think Edson Barboza is going to chew him up. But I think um, we focus so much on the kicks. I think Edson Barboza's striking is very underrated here. I think he can attack the body. Edson Barboza has some fast hands. You can jab him up. But we'll see. But like I said, me personally, for someone like who can take all the low strikes, ten strikes per minute, like we said, and come back and hit you with some some power. That could be very problematic for for Edson Barboza. Um, but I don't know, who? man. This is, this who? Is... Who does he take these strikes against? You know, who, do you, who, who does who take those strikes against? Who? Every time he takes strikes against a really good opponent, he gets knocked out. Hey, and, man. And he, but, as a matter of fact, how, how, he's how only had there, he's had four UFC fights. He was he he really should have lost to Michael Johnson. Uh, yeah. He and lost that. He his ass up too. It was terrible. He's getting beat down. But he stayed in there, and what happened? That pressure. Michael, he wilted. John- Michael Johnson let Darren Elkins do that, too. He let Michael that Johnson happen. wilted, man. But He always problem, wilts. That's what he does. You, Edson Barboza wilts, too. When he's faced with pressure, you can see Edson Barboza huffing and puffing sometimes in that third round. This is five rounds. Of just yeah, but he lasted. He, lasted to, he got beat up by Kevin Lee. He lasted to the fifth round. He got beat up by the Magomedov. He lasted to the fifth round. So Poirier... Let's see, Poirier KO, TKO'd him. Alvarez KO, TKO'd him. Vic, uh, Vic is like bobblehead. He's, he, That's he's the Poirier dead. pressure. Kevin Lee pressure. Justin Gaethje pressure. I'm just saying, I think Gaethje gets slaughtered in this fight, man. He's going to take a lot of damage. He's going to take a lot of da- I don't. I don't know who to pick. I don't know who to pick. This is just a show where we have to give picks and give an analysis on why we choose in that pick. It's I don't great. know who's going to win. I'm just not going to have much Gaethje exposure because I think it's... But you will have Gaethje exposure, and that's the point. That's it's, the only point. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just disgusting. That's all. I don't think you can fade the main event at all. All right. So, does that do it? Is that it? That does it. That does it. Why wasn't uh, Barboza in your mid-range top plays? I just like the other plays more. I like the Emmett. I like Emmett more. I like Dave Branch more. And I want, and you already gave you already gave Barboza. Barboza is pretty much a no brainer. You know that you can you play both sides of the main event because if you don't have a strong lean anyway, either way, the person who does win is going to put up a lot of points. And then right. I just gave Enrique Barzola regardless because he that that's my number one play. I, I don't think I'm getting away from him ever. I already have him with some bets. Like I love Barzola. That's my guy. He's a killer, a oh. killer. All right. That's going to do it for Black Market Picks. We guys hope you've enjoyed this show. Remember, enroll in the School of Black Negro Jitsu now on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play. Go do that right now. It's free. Enrollment is free. Peace out. See you later.